Hello everyone, today I will show you how to develop the design response spectrum shown in this figure according to ASCE. I will do it first using hand calculation and then I will show you how to do it inside ETABS. This figure has the relation of period and on the x-axis and the spectral response acceleration of g-unit for the y-axis. In order to determine or to, to obtain such kind of plot, we need first to determine the SD1 and SDS. Going to the definition of these factors, the SDS and the SD1 are the design response acceleration parameter at short period and at a period of one second. In order to determine SDS and SD1, we need first to determine SS and S1. These SS and S1 are the map maximum considered earthquake, and we can obtain them from figure 22. However, these figures are just for United States of America. If you are working for other country, you need to determine them according to your building code, the code used in your country. I will start first copying the required information. For example, I will copy this equation into Excel. Okay, if we have SS and S1, we can obtain these two SMS and SM1, and therefore we can obtain SDS and SD1. And FA and FB are just side coefficient. I have copied the tables to here to into Excel. Those are the tables that I have copied to the Excel. And I will copy this page here. I'm just copying the required information that we need. This is just an example that shows you how to develop the design response spectrum curve. Okay, we need first the site class as shown here. We need the site class to determine this site coefficient. I will take this information from a project that I have did previously in my thesis. For example, I will take these factors here. Okay, for site class D and for known SS and S1, we can obtain FA and FV. Okay, for, for, for the first table as shown here, we need SS is equal to 0 0.963, which is in between these two values. And for site class D, therefore, we need to do interpolation. Okay. I'm just interpolating to get the required value and for the second one we do just the same S1 we need S1 here as shown here and it's between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 and for D for site class D Okay, this is what what interpolation provide us these two side coefficient. Now SMS is just equal to FA multiplied by SS, and in same way for SM1 is equal to FV by S1. Lastly, SDS equal to two third of SMS and to two third of SM1. Okay, for T0, let me go again to ASCE. T0 is equal to 0 0.2 multiplied by SD1 over SDS. I will copy the same formula. However, I will remove 0 0.2. Okay, these are the required information we need for now. And for TL, we can obtain this one from ASCE, also from figure 22. However, th these values are just related to United States of America. I will assume a value here, for example, 5 seconds. 
Therefore, this is all the required information that we need to develop this design spectrum curve. Okay, let me put this here. Okay, for period less than T0, which is the one shown here, we need to use this equation. Substituting T equal to 0 will lead to 0 0.4 SDS. This is the acceleration for period O equal to 0. And for period equal to T0, we can obtain SA equal to SDS. And in the same way, for TS here, we also obtain SDS. Therefore, this is the first three inputs that we need. This is the first point, the second point, and the third point. Now, for uh, obtaining the acceleration between TS and TL, we need to use this equation as the 1 over T. Okay, I will take the incrementation of the period uh, at a small range, delta T equal to 0 0.05. And for this one, I will say SDS, sorry, SD1, divided by the period. Now we can scroll down for 5 seconds. Okay, for 5 seconds. As the one over this one. Now, for obtaining the accelerations for period larger than TL or long period, we need to use this equation as the one multiplied by TL over T square. Okay, I will do just the same here. I will add just a small time step. And for this one, the equation is equal to SD1 multiplied by TL divided by T square. Okay. Let me fix these two cells. And now we should scroll it down again. And as shown here, this is the design spectrum we have obtained from these computations. Okay, now please note that the computation we have did is for a 5% damping ratio. And for obtaining the spectra for 2.5% damping, we need to use a formula from ASCE. Let me show you from ASCE 4113. They, they use the same computations or the same steps as shown here. There is just the same table FA and FV and the same factors SS and S1. However, there is just one difference, which is this equation. Let me copy this equation. I'm showing you how to compute the spectra for 2.5% viscous damping because sometimes it's required. It depends on the location. Of course, here SXS means SDS, just the same, and SX1 means SD1. Therefore, they have used just the same computation, and the only difference is here, the B1 used. Okay, let me, let me copy this one because I have changed the name provided by, by ASCE 4113 to the names that we are familiar with. I, I replace SXS by SDS. And let me copy this one to here. I will take beta equal to 2.5%. And B1 equal to 4 over 5.6. One hundred multiplied by B or beta. Therefore, we obtain now B one as shown here. Okay, the first one I will start from zero. It's equal to zero point four SDS 
just here the same for these two. Okay, and we need now to apply this formula as the S multiplied by 5 over B1 minus 2 multiplied by T divided by TS plus 0 0.4 of course here we need to add brackets okay and for period equal to TS we need to use this formula which is SDS divided by B1 And for this reason, we need to use this equation. I will do just the same. I will increment the period using 0 0.05 time step. And the equation is just equal to SD1 divided by V1 by T. Of course, let me fix this one and this one. And just scroll down to five seconds. Okay. For this now, let me show you ASCE. We need to use the same formula in ASCE 710. However, we just need to include B1. Therefore, these computations here are just the same one that I have shown you in ASCE 710. However, just the, the difference is only here in B1 they used B1 to account for viscous damping okay let me use the same equation however I will include B1 here okay And now we can see the difference. The orange is for 2.5% damping and the blue one is the spectra for 5% damping. Of course, the orange have more uh, acceleration and this will lead to more demand forces in the building. Therefore, this is how we can develop the response spectrum design curve based on ASCE 710 and based on ASCE 4113. And now I will show you how to do it inside ETAPS. Let's go to ETABS and from define functions response spectrum. I will develop it first according to ASCE. Okay, let's copy the same numbers. Site class D and as shown here, ETAPS compute the site coefficients for us. Let's check if we have compute these factors correctly. As shown here, FA and FV are just the same. And SDS, SD1 are just the same. And this is how we can do it inside ETAPS. However, I will not use this one for this model. I will, let me show you what I will use. I will use this spectrum, which is for Bangkok site of Thailand. And the design response spectrum for Bangkok is different from the typical code spectrum that we have developed in, the, in that sheet, in this one. I have taken this from the Thai code and I will use this one inside ETABS. I have prepared a text file here. You should copy the text file to the folder of your model where you save your model. And now we go to ETAPS and from define function response spectrum. I will use a from file, add a new function. I will name it Bangkok, for example, Bangkok 2.5% damping. Okay. I will skip one line because let me show you. 
here there is a line ok and from browse we select select Bangkok and as shown here the response spectrum design curve is already inserted into etabs we can click convert to user define in this way if we delete the text file here it will not affect anything inside the model and ok therefore this is how we develop the design response spectrum curve and this is the end of this lecture and please continue the next video